Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And now, today, we solve what? We solve the midterm paper. That was our paper, okay? Spring 2020 semester, UT Peshawar. Our university midterm paper of the signal and system, I'm going to solve over here. So, I, I have the photos in my phone. So, the first thing is, uh, y of t is equal to, question number one is that y of t is equal to x of t upon t, x of t upon t. So, is this a stable system or an unstable system? So, most of these questions I maybe have covered while discussing the theory part, but we're going to have a revision sort of. So x of t by t, so is this a stable system or an unstable system? So we know for a system to be stable, it must satisfy the BBO criteria. That is for a bounded input, it should have a bounded output. So let my x of t be some bounded input, let's say a DC value. Let x of, and I give it a value as well, let's say 5. So my y of t would come out to be 5 upon t. Now it depends on the value of t, so if the t value is very very small, what would happen y of t would get out of range. Very small is a finite value, but very large is an infinite value. So which means that if my t reduces, this means that y of t increases beyond bound. If this reduces to zero, this reduces to infinity, which means that this is an unstable system. So the question was that is it a stable system? So that was false which means that this is an unstable system. Now I may have a little speed in this video, okay? I may be missing the eye contact as in the previous video, so I'm sorry for that, because then the video gets very longer. The next question is x of n is equal to two times cos of uh, pi by four n plus sine of pi by 8n minus 2 times cos of pi by 2n plus pi by 6 pi by 2n plus pi by 6 okay so we are asked to find the fundamental period of the given signal if this is periodic if not periodic so already that option is already present if this is not periodic, so we would take that option. So now what do you have is you need to find, uh, now it consists of three signals, uh, as a sum of three signals, so you know how to do it. I already have an example in the previous videos. If you have come along with me from the start, so this is what you know. So first we would find out individually. So omega one, first we find out omega one, that is pi by, Four, right so which means that t1 would come out to be 2 pi upon omega 1 which means that uh, multiplied with 4 upon pi so this would come out to be 8 so t1 is 8 right now omega 2 omega 2 is what it would be pi by 8 so which means that my t2 would be 2 pi multiplied with an 8 upon pi which would be 16 and finally you have omega 3 and what is that it's a pi by 2 so which means that my t3 is 2 pi multiplied with 2 upon pi so this is equal to 4 now you have t1 t2 and t3 now what do you have to do you need to take the ratios right so you take any two first so let's say i take t1 upon t2 so if i take t1 upon t2 this would equal 8 upon 16 and this would equal 1 upon 2 so is this a rational number yes this is a rational number so it satisfies the the condition for periodicity right so now what do i do i would equate it to the to the period of 1 and 2 combined so 1 and 2 combined is equal to 2 times t1 or it is equal to t2 and what is the value 2 times t1 uh, it is, is equal to 16 so T12 comes out to be 16. Now you take the this thing with the third, right? So T12 upon uh, 3, let's say. So so I have T12 and then I now I take it with the third. So T12 upon T3 would be what? 1, 2 is 16 and 3 is 4. So this comes out to be 
4. Now this is again a rational number, again the condition for periodicity is satisfied. So now what do you have? You would equate it as a whole, which means that let's say I equate it as T1, 2, 3, or this is the fundamental period of the overall signal, so I replace it with a T0, right? And what would this be? 4 times T3 is equal to T1, 2. 4 times T, uh, T3 is equal to T1, 2. And this implies that the fundamental period, this is equal to 16. So the fundamental period T0 is equal to 16 and we have an option over here for 16. So have a look, the amplitude shifting does not have, amplitude scaling does not have any effect, phase shift does not have any effect, amplitude reversal does not have any effect. This we have seen in a great detail, this we are solving the problems, we are solving the paper, so that's why I'm not going in the detail of that. So this is question number two. So we have an option of 16, okay? Now what do you have? The next thing is a memory-less system. Y of t is equal to y of t is equal to let me number this as well 1, 2 and this is now 3. y of t is equal to x of t squared. So check for memory. If this is a memory-less system or a with memory system. So I told you to check for a y of 0. So y of 0 is x of 0. Now you check for y of negative 1, this would be equal to x of negative 1 squared is a positive 1. Or similarly y of let's say 2, this would be equal to x of 4. So which means that this depends on the pre, pre upcoming values, the future values. So which means that this has a memory state. So this is a with memory system or I believe a dynamic it is called. So we had an option over here, I think. So what is the option? Uh, the option is, uh, wait. The option was only for true and false. So uh, x of t squared, so this is a, a with memory system. So this is a memory system, so it's false, okay? Because this is a with memory system. So now we are given a system, this is a little longer question, we are given a system in question number 4 uh, that y of t is equal to the derivative of x of t. y of t is equal to the derivative of x of t and now we have to uh, uh, check for the properties, all the properties for linearity, time invariance, memory, causality, invertibility and stability. So we would check them one by one. So. Uh, Number one, let's say is I check for memory. So for memory, how do you check this is a with memory system? Why? Because you know the derivative requires two points. Okay, uh, I would I would write that derivative requires two points because this is a slope, right? And the slope cannot be found only a single point. So the, so the next point, you need another point. With the present point, you either need the past point, you either need the a future point. So which means you need two points. So this is a with memory system. So I would be writing it at this side. This is a uh, with memory system. Fine. The next is, uh, or I would do it uh, in a line that is simple, causality, so again, you know, it requires two points, so the, let's say if, if this is a straight line, the slope of this is unknown, this is point 1, this is point 2, this is point 3, so if this 2 is my present point, this would become my future point, this would become my past point, so in order to determine the slope, if I have the present point, I would either need the past point or the future point. So practically, practically, you know, future point we don't consider, we consider the past point. So which means that practically this is a causal system. You could also term it as an, a non-causal because you can also take the future point. But practically we don't have any future point. We take the past point. So this is a causal system. Right? Uh, now for time invariance. So what do you do for time invariance? You delay the output first. So if I delay... Uh, my output so what would be the case that y of t is equal to derivative of x of t this would uh, go to be y of t minus t naught which would be the derivative of x of t minus t naught simply now what do you do you first delay the input which means you have an x of t minus t naught now you provide it to the system the system takes its derivative 
So which means that you have the derivative of x of t minus t naught. So have a look. These two are one and the same thing, which means that this is a time invariant system. This is a time invariant system. Now for stability. So for stability, again, you know, the VIVO criteria needs to be satisfied. Fine. For a bounded input, you need to have a bounded output. Let's say my bounded input is uh, what? My bounded input is again a DC value. So the derivative of a DC value is zero, which means that uh, what do I have? I have this bounded input, so I have a bounded output. So which means that this is a stable system. You can also check for other values. You can give it the RAM function, you can give it the impulse function, the unit step, the basic things you know, right? So this is a stable system as well. Now for linearity, you know that uh, you need to satisfy, let me change the color to make it a little color. You need to satisfy additivity, you need to satisfy homogeneity. So let me uh, check for uh, additivity first. In additivity, what do you have? Let's say uh, you have y1, which is the derivative of x1. Let's say you have y2, which is the derivative of another input x2. Now what do you do? You add them together. y1 plus y2 is equal to, what would you have? The derivative x1 plus the derivative x2. Fine, so this is one side. Now what do you have if you add the inputs first? You have x1 plus x2 and now you feed it to the system which means now it would take the derivative of this which means x1 plus x2 and now you open up the brackets so the derivative of x1 and then you would have plus the derivative of x2 so additivity is satisfied. Fine. Now homogeneity. Homogeneity what do you do? You multiply the output with a, with a constant k. You have x, you give it to your system and you have your y, you multiply it. So k times the derivative of x of t. Right? This is the first step. In the second step, what do you do? You have your x of t, you multiply it with a constant k. Now you feed it to your system. Now what do you have? You have the derivative of k times x of t. The k is constant. It does not have anything to do with the derivative. So it comes out of the derivative and you take the derivative of the input, which means these two are the same. The law of homogeneity is satisfied. This is a linear system also. So one, two, three, four and five are done. What do we remain with? The last property that remains is invertibility. Invertibility, so let me write it over there. If I have, you know, uh, what, for an inverse system, for an invertible system, you have, you, you should have an inverse system. So if this is my input x of t, this is being given to the system, which is the derivative, it's giving me y of t. Now, if I have a, such a system that I give this y of t to that system and it gives me back my x of t, so only then this would be an invertible system. And I have a system for this system. If this is giving me the derivative, the inverse would give me the integration. So if, if I have the integration of y of t, this is my inverse system. So which means that an inverse system exists only for an invertible system. So this is invertible as well. So that's question number four. Now I uh, remove the board for the more questions. Okay, that was question number four. Fine, now question number five is what? Now uh, it says your x of n is given Question number five, my x of n is given to be c times alpha of n. c times alpha of n. And it says that which of the following specified conditions represent a double-sided, double-sided growing exponential signal. So you would know from the basics, uh, if let's say c is equal to one, no problem. The magnitude of alpha uh, is if greater than 1 so it would be an exponential rise if the if the magnitude of alpha is less than 1 so it would be an exponential decay let me uh, uh, let me write it okay so if you have uh, alpha's magnitude greater than 1 you would have this sort of a function 
this sort of a function, an increasing function. If the magnitude of alpha is less than 1, you would have a decreasing function. If the magnitude of alpha is equal to 1, you would have a constant function and the constant value would be c. In, in our case, we consider c to be 1. Now, if these are for positive cases, if my alpha is equal to some negative value, and let's say that negative value is 2, let's say my alpha is equal to negative 2, so what do I have first? Negative 2 to the power 0, negative 2 to the power 1, negative 2 to the power 2, negative 2 to the power 3, and so on. So negative 2 to the power 0 is, is 1, right? Negative 2 to the power 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 to the power 2 is a positive 4. Then negative 8, 16, and this sort of a function you get. So it means that now this is increasing in what? In both the directions. So the option that are given is, uh, uh, let me write over here over here that if alpha is greater than 1 so of course this is not the case now if alpha is between 0 and 1 so of course this or for this case so you had either increasing in one direction decreasing in one direction in this case so this is also not the case then if it is between negative 1 and 0 so again this is also not the case so the case that is that alpha is less than negative 1 this is my answer if this is less than negative 1, so we have an increasing exponential in both the directions. Fine. This was question number 5. Question number 6. Question number 6 says what? Number 6. We are given y of n is equal to n times x of n. So we are asked about time variance or time invariance of it. So what do you do first? You delay the output first. You delay the output, which means that you have a y of n minus n naught, and this would simply be equal to n minus n naught times x of n minus n naught. Then in the second step, what do you do? You delay your input first, which means you have your x of n. You, you, you delay it to x of n minus n naught. Now you provide it to your system and the system is doing what it's multiplying n to the input. So you have an n times x of n minus n naught. So which means that these two are not the same. Uh, and what do you have? The, this is a time variant system. So this is a time variant system. And what do I have in the in the question this is a time variant system so is it true or is it false so this is true yes fine so that was question number six question number seven invertibility y of t is equal to sine of t into x of t sine of t into x of t. So now what you have is, uh, how to check this? So I told you when I was explaining this, if my x of t, if t is equal to 0, if x of t is 0, this would be 0. x of t is 1, this would be sine of 1. If x of t is 2, this would be 2 times sine of t, but we don't know the values of t. Maybe at that value of t we have undefined sine. Maybe at that value of t we have, un we have 0 sine. Right? At which we have different values of x of t. So we know x of t, but we don't know the t. So in that particular case, I told you when we were discussing this property to take some standard signals. So let's say my signal x of t is, let's say, the impulse function. So what do I have? My y of t would be equal to sine of t into delta of t. And you know from the sampling property of the impulse function that x of t into delta of t minus t naught is equal to x of t naught, right? x of t naught into delta of t minus t naught. x of t naught into delta of t minus t naught. So this is the sampling property of the system. So which implies over here for t naught equal to zero. So you have sine of zero into delta of t. 
So sine of zero would give you a zero. Right? Now if I take another signal, x of t is let's suppose two times this delta of t. So again what do I have? y of t would be equal to sine of t into two times delta of t. So again the same property, two times sine of zero into delta of t would, which would give me again zero multiplied two would be a zero. So it means for two different values of inputs I have a uh, same value of output so which means that this is a uh, I, this is a what? This is a non-invertible system. This is a non-invertible system. So this is one approach to solve this problem. If you could find a system, if you could find a system that is the inverse to this. So let's say if you have your x of t is your incoming signal it is given to this system it, that is, it is multiplying sine of t with their x of t so which means now over here you have an x of t multiplied with sine of t so now what do you have if you could find another system if you could find another system that you give it back to uh, that you give this particular thing to that system and it gives you your x of t back. So what would be that system? Let's say if there is a sine inverse of t. So sine inverse of t and sine of t would cancel each other and you would have x of t back. So on this base you could say that this is an invertible system. Now this is a question in which I was a little confused. So if you are asking me this, so in my paper, in my paper I have dealt it through this approach. I told it to be non-invertible, but then when I thought about it, so this one is invert. You can say from this approach, you can say it's invertible. So which one is right? I don't know. So please, this is my request. You should ask your teachers about this particular question and let me know as well in the comment section. Okay, please, because I need to know it as well. Okay, so you argue for yourself and you let me also know because I did in my paper in this approach and I got three. Uh, my three marks were deducted. So. I think what I think is that my this question was wrong so you let me know please these two are the approaches this is the first approach this is the second approach which one should I follow anyway moving to the next question moving to the next question what is the difference between amplitude shifting and amplitude scaling so you know it right do I need to write something this is question number eight so if you have amplitude shifting so in amplitude shifting what do you do you shift the amplitude either upward or you bring it downward so what do you have you have your x of t x of t you have your system you have your y of t in amplitude shifting what do you do you add something you have a plus k you add something to the output this is your amplitude shifting and if k is uh, positive so you have an upward shift and now if your k is uh, negative so you have a downward shift and this is what you know very well so these are the two cases based on uh, a value of k similarly you have an amplitude scaling so in amplitude scaling you could have the function to either compress or relax expand so which means that you multiply your y of t by some constant let's say beta or x of t with beta or whatever it is so y of t is um, y of t is let's say i talk about is that beta times x of t and over here i would have x of t plus k right i am adding something to the amplitude of it yes similarly now this is beta times x of t i am multiplying something to the amplitude of it so this value, if the magnitude of beta is greater than 1, you will have the signal to be compressed, right? Uh, yeah, no, this is amplification. This is not compression or expansion. I'm sorry if I told you in the beginning. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, this beta is greater than 1. This means amplification. The signal amplitude would increase. And if the magnitude of beta is less than 1. So this means that 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 the amplitude would reduce in 
uh, the waveform will remain the same, okay? In amplitude shifting, you will only shift it. The waveform will remain the same. In amplitude scaling, the waveform will change. It will either go up, elongate, or it will shorten. So let's see what I have time. Time will remain the same in amplitude scaling. No expansion or compression, right? And similarly in that case as well. So question number 8 is also done. The next question. Question number 9. This is a linear system. So 2 times x of t plus 5. So 2 times x of t plus 5. This is question number 9 y of t is equal to 2 times x of t plus 5. So checking for the linearity, so let me tell you that uh, I already solved one uh, example on linearity, you can solve it yourself as well. Additivity, right, uh, uh, homogeneity. But over here now if I uh, use the shortcut, linearity is independent of coefficient. Whenever you have an added or subtracted term, I told you in the shortcut when I was finalizing, this is the added or subtracted term. So this is, you, whenever you have an added, subtracted term, the system is going to be non-linear. Why? Because additivity will not hold. Additivity will not hold. And let's say I, I do it, additivity. So additivity, what do you do? You have, you have two outputs, uh, y1 plus y2. And you add them together, so 2 uh, times x1 plus 5, and then plus 2 times x2 plus 5. So which means it would give you 2 times x1 plus 2 times x2 plus 10. Right? And then if you have uh, your inputs added, x1 plus x2 is added, now it's given to the system. So now what do you have? It would take twice of this, so which means 2 times x1 plus x2 and it would add 5 to it so plus 5 which means that now this was 2 times x1 plus x2 plus 10 and that is plus 5 so the law of additivity is not holding as I told you over here so this system is a non-linear system and I told you if one does not hold you do not need to check for the other okay now the final question question number 10 uh, uh, yes, question number 10. So I have enough space over here. So let me write it over here. Question number 10 says what? My h of t is given. Uh, and this is an exponential of negative t plus 1 u of t. Now I'm asked if the given system is non-causal. So is it true? Is it false? Non-causal. So where did the blue pen go? Okay, leave it, okay, leave it. Blue pen, leave it. So checking for the causality, you know, you give it some inputs, you get some outputs. Let's say I have my y of, uh, my h of zero. So this would be exponential of uh, negative one u of zero. Then exponential is of course a constant, it's depending on u, the present values, okay? Similarly, if you have h of one, you would have some constant with u of one. Similarly, if for some negative value, you would have some value of the constant in terms of exponential. You have u of negative 2, but this is 0, of course, so we don't need to write it. But the idea is that this is a causal system. This is a causal system. Why? Because we have another definition also in terms of impulse responses. Now, we know the impulse response. So, I could say that if x of t is 0, for t less than 0, so which means this system is a causal system. This system is a causal system and this criteria is being fulfilled over here by the multiplication of u of t. So which means that this is a causal system. So my question was that the given system is a non-causal system. So uh, that would be false. That would be false because this is a causal system. So that's all about it. This was part A of the paper. Okay. So I finished this video over here because it has gone very long. And I'm also, you know, uh, feeling very cold, so I would get on a jacket and I would continue with part B in the very next video. So, till then, uh, see you very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye.